Ah, about time for the snowman. Come on, come on, out the way, out the way. You know, I was actually there more than 20 years ago when it all happened. Yeah. I hosted the party and gave James's scarf. Yeah. Oh, it really did snow that night. <laughs> they even had me grounded. But in the morning, everything was twinkly and alive and touched with magic. It was a still winter's morning around my busiest time, Christmas, when a small boy called James awoke to find that during the night, snow had fallen heavily and wrapped up the world in a fresh white blanket. <laughs> He was so excited he could hardly wait to get outside and play in the snow. He pulled on his warmest clothes and ran downstairs to find his boots. He rushed around excitedly looking for his socks. Finally, he was ready. But before he could escape, his mother made sure he wore his woolly hat, just to keep out of the cold. <laughs> Once outside in the frosty air, James explored the snowy garden joyfully, making his mark on the untouched snow. He made footsteps in the snow, pretending they were made by a giant. <laughs> he swung on the branches of the tree, which made the snow fall all around him, of course. And then that naughty James threw snowballs at the house. Much to his mother's alarm. <sighs> After a while though, James got bored. So he decided to build himself a friend to play with. Yeah. He decided to build a snowman. Now, it would take James some time to build his snowman. He started by rolling along a snowball until it grew into a, a huge snow boulder. Then he piled up the snow with a spade. Eh? But all this work, well, it was, it was thirsty business. So he stopped for a lovely cup of tea. Marvellous. When he went back out in the snow, he added a large snowball for a hedge thing. And then James stood back to admire his work. He was very, very pleased with his efforts, but it was, uh, it was something missing. So he ran into the house and asked for his dad's old hat and scarf. Yeah. Oh, see, that's it, yeah. There we go. But see, no, 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 the snowman still wasn't finished. So he took a tangerine for the nose <laughs> and chose coal for his eyes and his buttons, you see. And then a final touch was a friendly smile. As the evening drew in, James was called inside for supper. Reluctantly, he headed into the warm house. But James was excited about his snowman. He, he couldn't settle down. He kept trying to sneak peeks at his snowy friend. wasn't long before Dad said it was time for bed. So, James climbed the stairs to get ready. 
But he, he was so distracted, he took ages to get his teeth clean. And his pyjamas on. He, just, he, he couldn't forget his snowman standing outside in the garden all alone. Finally, he got into bed. His mum tucked him in, turned out the lights. James tried to sleep, but his mind was filled with thoughts of his snowy friend. So, he decided to go outside and wish him good night too. <laughs> James crept downstairs to the back door. He peered through the glass and sent the snowman a good night wish. Just as he did, the clock chimed midnight and a magical thing happened. Much to James's delight and surprise, the snowman turns to James. <laughs> oh dear. And then politely doffs his hat. The snowman was alive. Being a polite chap, James invited his new friend into the house. The snowman had never been in a house before. James wanted to show him everything. <laughs> the family cat took an almost instant dislike to him. Well, she didn't like his cold hands at all. <laughs> Another strange thing was that the snowman had never seen a Christmas tree before. Now, I mean, you and I know what they're for, but the snowman, well, he was amazed by all the coloured lights and the shiny decorations. James was taking great delight in showing the snowman around his front room. He even put on the television for him to look at. But he had forgotten all about the fire. Yeah, after a while, the snowman began to feel unwell. Quickly, James took the snowman to the kitchen where it was a lot cooler, see? There were many new things in the kitchen for the snowman to see. Steamy hot water, yeah. Phew, that wasn't much fun. <laughs> Fine-smelling, squeezy, washing-up liquid. Oh, a mum's homemade Christmas cake, complete with a miniature snowman. <laughs> then the snowman spied a bowl of fruit. Or could it be a selection of new noses? <laughs> the snowman tried the new fruit out for size, much to James's amusement. <laughs> After nosing through the kitchen cupboards, the snowman finally found something he really liked. The cold air from the fridge. <laughs> It was late, and James's parents were sleeping soundly in their bed. He thought that the snowman could go upstairs to see them, just as long as he was quiet. James thought they could explore Mum's dressing table, but the snowman thought he should just wake them up and greet them. Luckily, uh, James stopped him just in time. He didn't want to get into any more trouble. 
The snowman was amazed to find a set of teeth in a glass. He wondered what he would look like. So he picked him up, popped him in his mouth so he could grin at James. Still, he saw himself in the mirror. He was quite a shock. <laughs> Then the daft old snowman picked up Mum's makeup. He rouged his cheeks. Oh, he thought he looked so charming. <laughs> James opened up the wardrobe to see what he could find. The snowman put on Mum's best hat. Then he found Dad's trousers to dress up in. James had to help him with the braces, but he still looked very silly indeed. James thought the snowman should swap his scarf for a tie. Hmm. Then the snowman grabbed Dad's pipe and glasses, and there was the outfit completed. And the last thing he tried was Mum's perfume. Yes, I mean, it smelled lovely, but it was quite strong. They were having so much fun, but they had to get out before they woke up Mum and Dad. So James led the snowman out before he could make any more noise. James thought the snowman would like to see his room. There were plenty of things in there. The snowman found a musical box which he opened, and it started to play lovely music. So the snowman started to dance around. It is one of their favourite things to do, as it happens. Yeah. The snowman danced all around the room. He danced with Teddy. He danced around the train set, knocked over all the toy soldiers. He was dancing with only one roller skate on. Then he started dancing with James. Silly old snowman. He got so carried away, he ended up falling over. So his dancing had to stop. So James followed the snowman out of his room. And to his surprise, the snowman had seen something else he wanted to explore. <laughs> James looked through the window. He could see his dad's covered up motorbike. So he took the snowman downstairs and outside into the garden to get a closer look. The snowman lifted off the cover. He was curious about the motorbike beneath. James showed him all the different parts. Well, that mischievous snowman wanted to try it out, didn't he? So he popped on the helmet and he started up the engine. James was amazed that the snowman could drive it, uh, although he, he, was, um, well, he was a bit shaky at first. When the snowman pulled up, James was so excited, he jumped on without thinking twice. Oh, and off they sped out into the nearby fields to explore. They roared around the countryside, waking up the animals, who all watched them inquisitively as they went by. James and the snowman returned, the snowman realised that the engine had warmed up his legs, which were almost glowing with heat. Luckily, James remembered the freezer in the garage. 
took the snowman there to freeze himself up again. <laughs> oh, the snowman loved that freezer. For him, it was just like lounging in the bath. Funnily enough, in the freezer there was a picture of where I live here in the North Pole. It was on a box of uh, frozen fish or something, and it reminded the snowman of me and his other snowman friends. But he wasn't sure if James would be able to make the very long journey. In an instant he was overcome with a sudden urge to go to the North Pole, so he just grabbed James by the hand and began to run in great strides across the garden. James didn't know what was about to happen, but the snowman bounded across and up, up, they climbed into the sky and began to fly up into the snow-filled air. I remember they arrived at the North Pole just as my party had started and the Northern Lights were putting on their colourful show. Snowmen had arrived from all over the world for my annual snowman party. They weren't really supposed to bring anyone, so everyone watched as the snowman arrived at the party with James. And what a lovely boy. 
He greeted me with such a warm hug and a delightful smile. I couldn't be grumpy with the snowmen. I invited them both to join in the fun. Oh, we had such a splendid time. Oh, plenty of lovely grub, lots of refreshment. I'll tell you, those snowmen really love to dance. It was blooming marvellous. After all that larking about, I thought I'd show James the deer in their stable. You know, I even had James's Christmas presents still undelivered on the sleigh. And I'm pleased to say he loved his snowman scarf. Still, it was late. The snowman could see the sun on the horizon. So the snowman and James said goodbye and headed off into the sky to fly home again. Landed softly in the garden. Oh, but after such an adventure, the snowman knew it was time to say goodbye. James headed towards the house. Sorry to be leaving his new friend. But he ran back to have a last hug goodbye. Ha 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 ha! Before finally heading up to bed. went to sleep, dreaming of his magical adventure. In the morning, James rushed outside to find his friend. But the sun had come out melted all the snow away. For a moment, James thought it had all been a dream. But then he remembered his special snowman scarf. Oh, blooming marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> 